Hey, what's going on, guys? So I just wanted to talk about this article that uh, my boy Rizky sent me on the Discord server. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you bringing this to my attention. I thought it was an interesting article to talk about because there might actually be something here. Unlike most articles that come out from sites like these that are just a bunch of nonsense kind of spewing out as many paragraphs as they can to get their word quota in but don't actually give you any information, this one might be a little bit different. And uh, I'll tell you why. This is what comic book dot com so I, I don't know how much I trust these guys as a whole I, I'm not really sure I don't follow them they could be credible but they do share some perhaps promising or maybe kind of uh, not so promising information depending on how you want to take it here so let's kind of read what it says here it says if you're not familiar with Gantz and then you will surely hear a lot about it soon the manga is a popular one that came to a close in 2013 and now 20 years since its debut uh, a previous report by Deadline has resurfaced given talk of a Gantz live-action movie. For those that don't know, Gantz actually already had a live-action movie that came out in uh, Japan in 2010. So this one right here, uh, which isn't bad. It's it's okay. I mean, it is it is what it is. I don't know. We'll get into that in a second. Anyways, so back here, uh, the original report surfaced several months ago when Deadline reported on Mark Guggenheim. Guggenheim? Uh, Guggenheim? I don't know how to pronounce that name. Uh, in his ever-growing work with the CW. It was there that trade said Guggenheim is already in business with Sony Pictures, adapting the graphic novel Gantz. This information may have seemed to have fallen by the wayside until recently. Uh, they were able to dig up a little-known comments on the news report by both Guggenheim and Gantz's creator, and this is the interesting part, Hiroyu Oku. At the end of May, the creator was asked in a if if the report was accepted, but Oku only responded with an emoji holding a finger to the lips. The emoji seems to indicate something is up with the report, but Oku and the series team are keeping it quiet. So what he's talking about here is this tweet uh, right here, where somebody was asking um, that, you know, Guggenheim is who worked on CW's Legends of Tomorrow and The Flash, and he's already in business with Sony Pictures adapting the graphic novel Gantz. He asks, is this real? And Hiroyu responds with just this little, like, emoji kind of with the uh, shh face going on. Also, if you, I just followed this guy because I didn't realize that he had a, a Twitter, so. And, of course, he's got, you know, a manga lady as his, uh, <laughs> as his profile picture. Of course he does. But anyways... So that leads me to believe, since the creator himself actually um, responded with one of these, that something is going on with Gantz being adapted here in the West. And also, here's another tweet from Mark Guggenheim, where somebody asked if he's working on an adaptation for Gantz, and he's like, thank you, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So I'll give you my thoughts in just a second. Let's finish the article real quick. Um, the same secrecy was not kept by Guggenheim when the TV writer producer was asked about the adaptation. And that's talking about the tweet right there. Uh, for anyone who is not familiar with Gantz, the series was created in 2000. Yada, yada. Okay, so I, this is just like describing the plot, basically. So what I'm getting out of this is that Mark Guggenheim, this producer guy, um, his credits are right here. So if you don't know, he worked as he works as a producer primarily um, on like the CW show. So he got Arrow on there and Legends of Tomorrow and whatnot. And I don't think that Gantz would be in the same tone as as those shows, especially since it looks like they're trying to get it together for a movie and not a series, even though well here's the thing so like if you're gonna do Gantz in this kind of uh you know live action setting in the west the problem is going to be that like you're not going to be able to really do a lot of the stuff that Gantz does because it's such an adult like violent anime and even if you rate it R there are things that happen in Gantz that you're not going to be able to see I don't know how R rated they're going to try to go with it and that's kind of my concern and that's my issue is because I don't really know like the tone that the Gantz film would have if they go to create it. So first of all, Gantz is not a recognizable property here in the West at all. So you're going to have to promote this movie like it's a brand new thing. You're not going to have that brand recognition. You will internationally, perhaps, you know, in Japan and whatever, but like here in America, you're not going to have the brand recognition. So you're going to have to promote Gantz as a property uh, that people are going to want to come see, and also a property that's going to have to make money. It's going to have to make more than its budget back. And here's the thing. So, like, if you put a lot of money into a film like Gantz, which you would need primarily because you got to do the effects, you got to do the creature effects of the aliens, you got to do the effects of the suits, you got to do the battle scenes and the action sequences and stuff. You know, take all, like, the nudity and stuff out for a second, but just focus on, like, the amount of action that you're going to have to do. Um, even if you only do what the Japanese film did and you adapt the first three arcs, so up to the end of the Buddha mission. So if that's your film, 
that's a hell of a lot of stuff, hell of a lot of effects and things to put into a movie. And in order to have the budget to do that, you have to, you know, you're going to have to be really creative with that because you can't throw a ton of money at this movie unless you expect it to make more than what you put into making it, right? It has to make a profit. So what I'm worried about is that this Gantz is going to be more of like a, uh, you know, a watered down PG-13 kind of movie that doesn't have the kind of insane uh, action elements that the manga has, you know, with everybody getting ripped apart and guts going everywhere and, you know, main characters dying left and right. Uh, they still might do that, but as far as, like, the gore effects and stuff, in order for it to make the kind of money where it would make its budget back, I would think that they would have to maybe make it a PG-13 so that more people can come see it. You know, it's going to appeal to the young younger uh, demographic because, you know, it's got a lot of action and sci-fi horror kind of stuff, so, like... Um, you know, I would imagine that that would be the case. If they do try to go for a hard rated R, I feel like the effects are going to be, you know, pushed back a little bit because they just have to be able to afford to make it. Um, I'd be interested to see it, but I just feel like we might be setting ourselves up for disappointment because how often do adaptations of manga or anime come out and usually people are disappointed by it? I mean, I'm in the very minority that, like, I like the live action Ghost in the Shell movie. But at the same time, like, it's not like it's a perfect adaptation. I mean, the, the anime, the original anime film is better, and so is the uh, the series, Standalone Complex. So, I mean, I don't know. And it still might be in the kind of, uh, you know, producing stage. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it's green lit. Keep in mind, there's nothing official here about the film being made or released or even green lit to say that it's accepted to be made. It's probably this guy, Mark Guggenheim, and his team of other producers and whatnot trying to come together, trying to get a script together, trying to get an idea, maybe just a pitch, not even a script, to try to get a studio to okay it. So that's what I'm assuming where they're at right now. So he's probably trying to convince the studio that it would be a profitable film to make. Um, you know, if you got the creator on his side and everything, you know, he's maybe like helping with development, helping to get it made here in the West, because like I said, there was a Gantz live action uh, movie that was made in Japan, um, which was okay. It, again, it's very watered down. It's very like, it's not like the manga, you know, I mean, it's good ish. I mean, it's fun. If you're a fan of Gantz, I would definitely recommend watching it. Uh, there's the Buddha <laughs> alien right there. I definitely recommend watching it if you're a Gantz fan, but it's not going to, like, blow you away or anything. And there's there's two of them. So there's two live-action movies, and then there's the, uh, the anime film of the Osaka arc. So there's those that have already exist if you want to check them out. Also, there's the original anime. Um which is kind of like stunted in its animation, but it's how I got introduced to it, and I thought it was pretty good for what it was. So there's always that for you as well um, that you can watch. If I can get a photo of it here. Well, I guess I can't, but yeah. Chris Ayers does the voice of Corona. That's, that's kind of interesting. Anyways, um, yeah, so this anime always exists also. This uh, goes up until a little bit after the, uh, the Buddha mission too. So that's usually where that's where the first movie ends, and it's a good closing point. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, if you're gonna do, if you don't know if you're gonna get a chance to do more, if you do up until the Buddha mission, I mean that makes sense. Um, but yeah, anyways, guys. So there's the article. I'll link it below if you guys want to read it yourself, and uh, you can check it out, make your own opinion. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you would want a Gantz live action film. Uh, let me know if that would be something you would be looking forward to or if you think that they would just butcher it or it wouldn't be good or if they should just redo the anime, which is what I think. So put all that down below. Let me hear your thoughts. Uh, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys next time.